Hey, this is Craig Valentine. Welcome to the seven secrets of millionaire productivity. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to answer the number one question that you have been asking me in emails and Instagram and all that sort of stuff. But first, I'm going to share with you an important story. But before I even get to the important story, I just want to point out, like, I have been able to make time and make more money by applying these seven secrets. So this is the middle, middle of the week, you know, middle of the day, we're going out for lunch. My mom's in town for 80th birthday and, you know, I've got my baby. I spent a lot of time with her, amazing time with my wife. That's my sister in the black dress. And I made time by, for doing this because of the principles I'm going to share with you right now. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you are making and banking your first million, this is going to be incredibly helpful. But also if you're like I once was a broke, struggling, introverted, socially anxious, binge drinking, personal trainer who didn't want to be any of those things, well, this is going to be remarkably valuable for you, okay? So in this, we're going to go through the seven secrets of millionaire productivity. So it's not about getting up at 5 a.m. It's not about working 12 or 14 hours a day. It is simply about getting the most done in the least amount of time and also answering that question. Now, I want to introduce you first to somebody, my friend Joel Marion. This is he and I in South Africa in 2018, well after he had been super successful almost 10 years to the day that he hired me as a coach. And when he did hire me as a coach, he was a broke, struggling, not introverted, uh, very extroverted high school teacher. So Joel is making $42,000 a year in 2008. He had written a book, Cheat Your Way Thin, and it allowed him to quit being a teacher for a year, but then he realized you can't make money with a book and he had to go back to teaching and he didn't want to be a teacher. He wanted to have impact. He didn't want to have that certain schedule anymore. I'm not sure he was a pretty horrendous schedule for a guy who is like Joel is a night owl. He absolutely likes staying up late. And I'll show you the schedule he had in a second. But when he came to me, he had to step it up. Here we are. We're actually representing our friend Pedro Skoulian's book, uh, Man Up, uh, while we're on safari in South Africa. And we want to take that picture for Bedros. But I want to show you like when, again, Joel came to me. So he would have been only 26 years old at the time. But he woke up at 7 a.m., started teaching at 7.30 a.m., got home at school at 2.30 p.m. He napped till 5 p.m., then he worked in his online business till 2 or 3 a.m. This is what he was doing when he got introduced to me at Christmas time of 2008. And he was just on that repeat because very much like myself, very much like anybody who's successful that I know, you are on a mission. You are on a mission. And yeah, you're going to have to grind a little bit at first in order to achieve your goals and stay on that straight line to success. But this is not sustainable, clearly not sustainable for anybody at any age. And so what we did with Joel is we built his millionaire productivity plan. Um, again, this is not specific to the hours that we work. Funny story about Joel is I've spent a lot of time at his homes in Florida and Joel and I have the opposite schedule for a long time. We had the opposite schedule. He would work from 10 PM till 4 AM. I would get up at 4 AM and that signaled it was time for Joel to go to bed. And then I would work from 4 AM until about 10 AM. And then he and I would meet up again, work out and have lunch and hang out. And so we just had the opposite schedules. So again, it's not about the hour that you get up. It's about what you do with the hours that you are up now. He came to me, we gave him that millionaire productivity plan. Three months later, he had a $300,000 product launch. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I created the product or I created the copy. Joel is a machine at copywriting, but it was the structure and systems that I gave him that allowed him to triple his output. Um, then he was able to quit his job and he had seven figures in 12 months, again, as a high school, uh, former high school teacher. And then in the next five years, he built a $100 million supplement company. So this guy is a beast, but it doesn't matter if you're a beast. It doesn't matter if you're a Formula One race car. If your wheels are in the mud, you're not going to get ahead. So I know what you're thinking. You're a high performer. You're, you're doing all this work. And my job in this training is to come and pick you up that Formula One race car, move you over six feet onto the track so that you can zoom down the road, much like Joel did. So the number one question that people ask me these days is how the heck are you able to be productive, you know, having your first kid, you know, aren't you tired all the time? Aren't you this, that, and the other thing? And the answer is by using the systems that I created, the, the seven rules that you're going to follow here, I'm not tired. I'm actually getting more done than ever. I even got sick for two weeks and we sold massive amounts of coaching into our business because of the team I built, the systems I built, showing them, all my team members, how to be maximum productive. And that's the key. So the number one thing that millionaires have in place is this planning. So when Joel came to me, we were planning out his product launch and we had it 
oh, down to the like nitty gritty details. Now, most people go through life and they don't have a plan. They don't have that straight line to success. And therefore, because they don't have the straight line to success, they're off on all these detours and bouncing around all over the place. And that is going to be so much wasted energy, so much wasted passion when you don't have a very detailed plan. Now, these are my books, The Perfect Day Formula. In The Perfect Day Formula, which I wrote in 2015, I outlined two very important visions. One, how, um, let's see, 2015, nine, nine years earlier, on the very first coaching call with my very first coach, the very first question he asked me was, Craig, what do you want your business to look like in five years from now? I told him I wanted to have the business of early to rise or a business like early to rise. I didn't want to own early to rise. I wanted to have a business like early to rise, the most popular health, wealth, and success newsletter at the time. And my coach, Tom, he said, yeah, man, I totally know that business, but Craig, you're going to have to improve your speaking, your writing, your networking, your coaching, all these things. You're not actually very good at anything except being a fitness expert. And so I then dedicated the next few years of my life and I got the opportunity to buy the exact business of my dreams early to rise five years, three months, and 17 days later, I was able to buy the business of my dreams because I followed the plan. Now, I also talk about in the perfect day formula, the vision for my future about finding the love of my life and, you know, having a family. And sure enough, you know, that goal is for 2020. And sure enough, I was able to get married. I, I got married in 2021. So I was about eight months late on that. Uh, we had our first baby in March of 2022. So I might've been a little bit late on that too, but it was because I had the vision set out. I had the plan. I had the accountability from people, which is a secret ingredient to success. And it's been absolutely game changer. So I rewrote my vision on Unstoppable. I've got a little bit of different version in the perfect week formula and even went and back and rewrote the perfect day formula in the vision chapter in there because it's so important. Because when you have your values and your vision, they drive every daily decision. <clears throat> now, I just came in from a workout a shower, obviously, but I just came in from a workout, which I do every single day. There's a lot of mobility in there. And why am I telling you this? Well, because one of my values, so I have four values. I, I ask my clients to come up with a value for their family, their health, their wealth, and their personal enrichment, which could be charity work and stuff like that. And so just what's the number one thing in each one of those categories? So for me, it's to have my family with three kids with Michelle. <clears throat> That's number one. Then the wealth is to have a certain income every year, a certain passive income and a certain net worth. And then in the health side is I want to feel like I'm 17 every day. I want to have high energy. I want to have high energy. I want to be able to move well. I want to be able to keep up with my kids, even though I am, you know, having kids later in life. And that's the value. That's the vision, right? Very clear. You know, me running around in the backyard with the kids and not having to worry about being overweight or being, you know, sore knees or whatever it is, or sore back. And therefore, the values and vision drive every daily decision that I'm going to do daily mobility every day. I am going to eat well every day. I'm not going to overeat. I'm not going to gain weight. I'm going to eat uh, spinach every day. I eat high protein every day. I do this, that. I, I do those daily activities because my values and vision drive every decision. And again, if you don't have a straight line to success, you're going to be off on detours and it's really going to lead to struggles in your life. So what do you do? You sit down, you answer this question that I take my coaching clients through, you know, whether they pay $50,000 for a year, 25 K for a day, or, and they're in the mastermind or whatever we sit and I go, listen, we got to start off the 30,000 foot level so that I know exactly what you should be doing at 10 o'clock in the morning. I know that sounds super weird, but this is like my zone of genius is taking people's values and vision and making them into reality. So I ask this question. I want you to answer this question. You can answer the question in, in the comments down below, but what are the greatest accomplishments you want to achieve in the next 10 years for each of your top values in life, family, health, wealth, and experiences. Now you can see my health one. I want a clean sheet from the health nucleus exam kind of bounce back and forth between that and the 17, you know, feeling like I'm 17. The health nucleus is a, is a $25,000 um, program down in San Diego where they do like five days worth of tests. And I know a, a couple of friends who went through it. I know a friend who got early cancer detection from going through it. And so, you know, my goal is to go through that very soon and always have that clean bill of health. And you can see all the other things on there. It's just, that is my straight line to success. It's so clear. And therefore you can see like, oh, I, I see like, if this is what this guy wants, I can imagine his day. I can imagine his day. Do you think I'm going to Vegas for bachelor parties with this as my goal? Absolutely not. That is not something that should be on too many people's lists. That's for sure. 
All right now. So that's the vision. That's the values pyramid, which then leads to the vision, which we set out a five-year vision. I talked about that. I've achieved two five-year visions because of the specificity. Then we build out a one-year blueprint. Then we move into the months. We build the 90-day blueprint. So 90-day outcome goal, process goals. I've walked through this in some of my other YouTube videos. So make sure to go through this. And I do a deep dive here. Um, but this, you know, doing this with clients, all of a sudden they go, okay, wow, I know exactly what to do. So my client, Frank Dan Blank, and he came to me in 2018 in Frankfurt, Germany to one of my workshops on this. He was working 15 hours a day, making $10,000 a month. You know, six figures, but it works out to about, you know, 20 bucks an hour with the amount of work that he was doing. And then three months later, after he did this sheet, he was making $100,000 a month and working eight hours a day. Three months later, he was making $300,000 a month and working eight hours a day. So it's just super powerful to do this monthly planning into, you know, three month plan, then into the day by day. And so if you need to plan your weeks, you need to plan your days, the perfect week formula. There I am. I actually made a YouTube video on my wedding day. Michelle gave me the, the go ahead. She was getting, getting ready. And I was like, Hey, how, how often am I be wearing a red bow tie? So that's productivity secret. Number one, if you don't have a crystal clear plan for everything, you can't even, you know, pass, go collect $200 and keep moving ahead. Like you have to have that fundamental. So dialed in, otherwise it's going to be really, really tough for you. So next one is own the night with the ultimate evening routine. Own the night with the ultimate evening routine. So if you look at high performers, it's not like they wake up in the morning and go, oh man, I don't know what time it is. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, obviously they've done the planning and preparation and they've owned the night before. So they're not staying up late. They're not binge watching. They're not binge drinking. They're not binge eating. They're just binge sleeping, really high quality sleep, quality REM sleep, quality deep sleep. So they get up in the morning. They get up on time, they don't hit the snooze, they go to work on the most important thing, and they win the day by owning the night before. So what do we have to do? We have to have a hard cutoff time for work so that we're not guilty, right? We're not guilty and like thinking about work when we're with our family or thinking about our family when we're at work. No, we got to have hard cutoff time, separation of work and life, work, home, work life and home life. I'm a big believer in separation of work life and home life. Do not blend it. And then make sure you have the reverse alarm. So you hit that reverse alarm, which means an hour before bed, everything gets shut off. Now, listen, if it's 8.30, I don't care. Like, it's not about the hour. It's about the activity, the fundamental. So you set a reverse alarm 60 minutes before your bedtime, your desired bedtime. Because if you don't, that's when you stay up too late. And you shut off all your electronics. You do old school activities, as I like to call them, and, you know, talking to people, making your lunch, having a bath, doing jigsaw puzzle, reading a book, whatever. Those things put you to sleep. Boom, you binge sleep, and then you get up on time. You get to bed on time, you get up on time, you own the day. So you own the night to own the morning to win the day. And this is all part of my build your business around your life, not your life around your business system. So having that caught up time is key. Then making sure you do your planning and preparation for the next day. Having that switch over the routine, like I had a client, Isabel Price, and what she did, she worked in an office at home, and then she had to go out and be super mom to her kids. And we had a little routine where she put her to-do list in a drawer. She listened to a song. She went out. She had that switch over. And now she was in super mom mode, super uh, much more effective. Having your family and your food prepared in advance, knowing exactly what you're going to have for your meals, doing that on Sunday or getting you know, some food delivery, having that one hour of wind down. And then the sleep stack that I use, um, I use a magnesium supplement. I use a chili pad, which cools my side of the bed, uh, which allows us not to use the air conditioning as much because Michelle doesn't like it as cold. Having the blackout shades, having the eye shades, having the earplugs, all of those things that give me quality sleep, allow me to binge sleep. And that's what I'm aiming for at night. That's the only binging you should be doing at night is binge sleeping. All right, then into millionaire productivity secret number three, which is GSD on your MIT ASAP. So when we've won the night, we can crush the morning, right? Get stuff done on your most important task, ASAP, all right? So this is the perfect week formula worksheet. And you see, we wake up, again, it's not about the hour that you get up, it's about what you do with the hours that you are up. This is just a sample. And then you go into NUI work, non-urgent important work. There are very few people who can do uh, the Tuesday morning, which is self-care, then NUI work, but getting up and going right to non-urgent important work, which is often the most important task, doesn't have to be done today. It's like a sales letter or a book or a sales script or whatever. It's like, ah, I can push it off till later. No, you gotta do that first thing in the morning when your mind is racing with great ideas. 
All right. So getting up and owning that morning, getting to work right away using the farm boy morning routine and not these long drawn out things that are just perverse forms of procrastination. Instead, we get right to it. Millionaire productivity secret number four is white space. And I'm learning this the more and more I, I get mentored by, you know, deca millionaires, which is somebody who has eight figures, um, hundred millionaires. I don't have any billionaires, billionaires as personal mentors, but certainly by seeing what people do who are more successful than me, I notice they have more white space on their calendar and white space in their brain. Here's a great quote from Noval. It's actually really important to have empty space. If you don't have a day or two every week in your calendar, when you're not in meetings, when you're not always busy, then you're not going to be able to think. And so I don't, I think what most people do is they have too many inputs in their life from television to Netflix, to podcasts, to music, to this, that, the other thing, like you never have silence. And so I never have anything inputting when I walk the dog and I go for lots of walks. I don't listen to anything when I work out. It's no inputs because that's when my brain is synthesizing all of the information that's come in and it's putting it together. It's connecting the dots looking backwards, as Steve Jobs said, where you're going to find the big breakthroughs. So you're not going to be able to have good ideas for your business if you don't have this empty space. He calls it empty space. I call it white space. You're not going to be able to make good judgments. I encourage you to take at least one day per week, preferably two, because he says, if you budget two, you'll end up with one where you just have time to think. And this is like a key principle in David Koch's or Richard Koch's uh, book, or Richard Koch. I'm not sure exactly how you say his name. Uh, the 80-20 principle. And also in Keith Cunningham's The Road Less Stupid, they talk about having time on the calendar where you just sit and think away from devices, maybe even out in nature because your brain operates different. Remember Newton, the apple dropping on his head? Where is he sitting? He's sitting under an apple tree. He's not in his lab thinking about gravity. He had the insight, according to legend, outside. All right. That's what we're aiming for. White space on the calendar. I force my top clients, my millionaires, my eight figure clients to take an hour and a half on Friday morning and go for a walk, go for a walk Friday morning for an hour and a half. And you will solve your problems. You will overcome your biggest obstacles. You would take advantage of your biggest opportunities It is an absolute game changer. Do not skip that. And I know what you're thinking. I don't have time for it. You don't have time for it. And it's because you don't have time for it, that you can't solve those problems that are taking all of your time. Seriously cut back and go and get that white space. Next is, I, yeah, I skipped one. So a millionaire productivity secret, I mis, misnumbered it. It's energy management. So this is number five, energy management. <clears throat> what most people do is they try and take a square peg and put it into a round hole all day. Okay, I know that's not what I should be um, showing you. Uh, keep your mind out of the gutter here. But listen, what this means is, is that most people take their hardest task and they try and do it when they're tired, right? Oh man, I got to write that sales letter. They don't do it in the morning when they have the greatest energy because they do these long morning routines. And then they do it at two o'clock in the afternoon when they've had a bad lunch and they're tired from the day, they have no willpower and they try and do the hardest thing. Or they put the you know, negotiation when they're tired. It, it, like you just got to rearrange your schedule and take the hardest thing and put it in the right area. So square peg, square hole. So your number one thing that you have to focus on, the big problem, you identify the time of day when you have the greatest energy, creativity, and productivity, and mental intensity, and then you take the hardest task and you align them. If you don't do that, you're going to be out of alignment. You're going to be unproductive. I call it magic time. Magic time is the time of day when you're three times more creative, productive, and energetic than any other time of day. And I have written multiple books in 15-minute slots of magic time by doing this. I get up, I crank out 500 words in 15 minutes. I can write 1,500 words in 90 minutes, just crushing it. And that's a difficult task to write 1,500 quality words with, that hardly need any editing. Boom, just comes out because I match the activity to my mental intensity. So intensity of activity, intensity of mental uh, thinking, and boom, you're going to crush it. So make sure to do that match. If if you don't even decrease your hours, if you don't even decrease the number of meetings, but you simply match your energy of your brain with the energy required by the activity, this will increase your productivity. Massive. It's game changer. All right. The next one, this is actually number six, is self-reflection and introspection. This only works when you take the time to sit back and think. So this is another white space, weekly review. Look at the top right, weekly review and planning. Do a review of your week. And then plan the week. 
and just do this. What worked? What worked last week? You know, where was I on my game? Where did I match my intensity with the activity? Where, where was I at my best as a leader? And then the next question to ask is, what didn't work? Where did I drop the ball? Where did I snap at someone? Kids, wife, you know, team member, whatever, somebody at the grocery store. Where did I, where did I drop the ball? And then once you know what worked and what didn't, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. That's it. And if you do this, if you go through this loop every single week and preferably every single day, you could do this for five minutes at night. Think about how much better. If you do this once per week, that's 52 iterations of this loop, of this feedback loop, and you will get so much better. Remember, I was a broke, struggling, introverted, socially anxious, binge drinking personal trainer. Today, people can't believe that I'm introverted because of the energy I can bring on podcasts and videos. But that is just a learnable skill that I improved over time by going through and watching, going through the loop and cycle of, okay, do the thing, then watch it. Now, find the improvement, do the thing. Okay, watch it, find the improvement, make the adjustment, do the thing. And just doing that hundreds and hundreds of times allowed me to get better. So that's what you need to do is make sure that you do that so that then you can go and better plan your week. And that's the key. Now, I will say this is actually number seven here. I called it a bonus, but then I realized I got things wrong. Uh, I didn't call this the millionaire accounting uh, secret, but the millionaire productivity bonus secret, which is number seven, is accountability. Accountability is a secret ingredient to success. If you try and do everything on your own as a lone wolf, you will run into tough days You will where you have low energy or you'll run into walls where you don't have the answer. And you'll run into moments where it's like, man, I'm going to take the easy way out. And if you take the easy way out, you take the path of least resistance, you disappoint yourself, your future self, your family, everybody who's counting on you. Now, if you flip it and you have a coach, accountability partner, somebody you deeply do not want to disappoint, which is the secret ingredient to the secret ingredient. So accountability, so being able to check in with somebody and get their feedback is the secret ingredient. But when you are checking in with somebody that you deeply do not want to disappoint, the little mountains at the bottom there. You know, so if you're just doing it on your own, you can achieve so much. But if you're accountable to somebody that you deeply do not want to disappoint, they will raise the bar. They will make you play up a level in life. And so they will align your actions and your goals because that black heart is just disappointment in life, the number one cause of friction. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually just going off a little diagram. So if you're listening to this on my podcast, I have a diagram with a black heart in, in the top left corner <clears throat> with green grass beside it. The black heart of disappointment makes you think that the grass is greener on the other side. You chase shiny objects. When you chase shiny objects, you're mismatched between your actions and your goals. And that leads to stress and anxiety and low performance. But when you align your actions and your goals, you elevate your performance and you go to the next level. Now, how do you do that? You get outside eyes from your coach and you get accountability from a coach who says, listen, I know that you're capable of so much more and the coach holds you accountable to doing the actions, to following all of these productivity rules, to making sure that you do your planning, to making sure that you improve every week, to making sure that you take white space, to making sure that you have the right energy management. And when you have somebody that you're checking in on a regular basis with, who has your best interests at heart, who wants you to succeed as much as you want to succeed, that is when you will be the most successful person reaching your full potential. And being able to achieve true freedom in your life, like Joel, like myself, like Bedros, like Jason Capital, like Isabel, like all the people that I've talked about here today, because I know that you're capable of it. You're already working so hard and you deserve better results. And so just put these into play and you will dramatically improve your lot in life. All right. So I want to hear about your values. So drop lots of comments down below and what that's going to help you change, how this is going to help you improve what you took from this video. I'd love to hear it. And I'm going to continue making videos like this. So make sure to watch the next one because I am here to help you. I was a broke, struggling, introverted, socially anxious, binge drinking, personal trainer who struggled in life. And I make these videos because I don't want you to go through that too. Instead, I want you to get results faster than I did. All right, peace. We'll see you in the next video. And I love you a lot.